case that we need to deal with. So a virtual image, let me go back and grab my pen here. A virtual image is when the object distance is less than the focal length. Our object is inside the focal length. And you'll see what happens with a converging lens is the rays do bend. They come to be less of an angle. They get a little bit closer together. But still, they don't ever get to the point where they're going to meet. And in fact, what happens is that if f is a positive number and s naught is less than f, you find that si becomes a negative number if you do this math, which is exactly what the formula predicts. Si is out here in the negative direction. What does this mean? This means that with a positive lens, a converging lens, that the image will appear to be on the other side of the lens. And in fact, this is how a magnifying glass works. And we can see this if we take an object, the red arrow here, and take some rays off the front of it. You'll notice the rays off the top of this object never meet. But if we extend it backwards and see where the rays appear to meet, the image is larger than the object. So we have a magnification that's greater than 1. And you'll also notice the magnification is a positive number not a negative number because the image is upright. And in fact, this is how a magnifying glass works. If you use a magnifying glass, which is just a positive lens, you have to get the magnifying glass uh, closer than a focal length, and your eye will see an object that appears to be larger. Um, negative lenses, of course, always create virtual images. And a negative image, even outside the focal length, if the object's outside, the rays bend outward, they diverge, and they appear to come from a place that's a little bit closer. Um, it's slightly different, though, if you look through a negative lens, because if you look at the object rays here, and we bend them, and then extend them back, you'll notice if we extend back, the image is also positive, but it's smaller. And so if you look through a diverging lens, a concave lens, or a double concave lens, you'll see that there's an upright image but it appears to be smaller than through a magnifying glass. And you've probably noticed this as you've looked at different types of lenses, or you can ask in the lab and bring some lenses out for you and let you play with these. And so now we understand what magnification is. We also understand how to calculate magnification by uh, the image height divided by the object height. And we know that virtual images are for systems where the rays never physically meet up. That doesn't mean we can't use virtual images in optical systems, because all these rays of light are, all the lens is doing in this case is bending the rays of light, and that can be very useful, but we'll leave this until we start to study optical systems in the coming weeks. Uh, let's talk about one more topic before we quit here, and that's the idea of angular magnification. Um, you can define the magnification not only as the ratio of an image height to an object height, as we did previously, but an angular magnification, also called a magnifying power, is the ratio of the angle on the image side of the lens divided by the angle on the object side of the lens, or the angle on the right divided by the angle on the left. And it's used for objects that are very far away. Virtual images are for imaging systems that are used with the human eye. And, and this is actually uh, very useful, for example, when you're doing astronomy. And we can look at some numbers here. If you're looking at a, a star that's roughly the size of the sun, which is about 1.4 billion meters, but the star happens to be 400 light years away, uh, something on the order of 3.8 times 10 to the 18th meters, you'll see, in fact, that, that these ratios um, for image height and object height and distances just absolutely become ridiculous. Uh, the numbers and magnifications don't make sense. And it makes much more sense to talk about the very small angle coming in here uh, versus the angle coming in on the other side of your tele telescope and defining a, a magnification of a telescope for things far away in terms of angular magnification rather than transverse magnification. And so that's why we define this, although we're not going to use angular magnification too much in this class. And we'll go on next time and look at systems of lenses and optical systems.